So another one in my um, ME109 kit reviews and or variant kit reviews. Um, this one we're going to be looking at the uh, Tamiya 148 scale um, BF109 E4 slash E7 TROP. Uh, now a lot of these World War III aircraft had this tropical version and it was just the same base model but it had a, um, a, a good filter on the engine uh, to filter out sand and dust and stuff that you would get in tropical desert type environments. It wasn't good for the engines, so that was just a variant that was produced. And again, this is the typical uh, Tamiya quality. Um, it really, I, I mean, I can't say enough good things about Tamiya. Uh, they come well packaged in these nice, thick um, plastic uh, bags. Uh, starting off with the um, plastic, uh, not quite the same surface finish as you would have seen in the Edward kit. If you haven't watched that video, right there take a look at it i look at the g6 late version that they made uh, so the surface quality isn't quite the same as what you'd see on edward kit uh, but but for its time it was still uh, an amazing it still holds up quite well today and the costs you know a brand new one of these is, is a fraction of what you'd spend on the edward kit uh, so you still get decent bang for your buck so starting here on uh, sprue, what letter is this one? Does it even have a sprue letter? I don't think these are letters. Anyways, on this particular sprue, um, you get uh, the upper and lower wings, your ailerons, your uh, leading edge slats, uh, some of your antennas, guns, uh, and the mass balances, your drop tank, the mount, the radiator faces, your main landing gear wheels. Um, the back side of the hub is included, but the front side of the hub is molded as a separate piece to allow you to have a nice clean painting seam there. Uh, your gear doors as well as your spinner. There's a couple of very different variants of the spinner available. Some a little pointer, some a little blunt, and then the Canon version. And I believe these are part of the Canon armament. And then your uh, main gear legs. So everything again, uh, decent detail. Uh, not Like I said, not exactly what you would see in an in in Edward kit. Uh, but a uh, decent bang for your buck if you're looking to do, you know, a... Uh, uh, well, to me, it used to be considered the pinnacle, and now it's sort of that mid-range kit if you're looking to get a decent kit and not spending a lot of money. On the other sprue, which includes the um, fuselage, you always get these little tiny rubber nubs uh, for the spinning props. I never use them, but they're always included. So on this one, you get your fuselage again, really nicely done. Um, cockpit parts with all of your uh, rudder pedals and wheels, instrument panel, armor plate, your horizontal stabs, your elevator, um, your rudder, your wheels, uh, land tail wheel, your different filters. This includes, there's that tropical filter um, for the desert version. Uh, you also get your upper cowling machine guns. I believe that is part of the armor plate, I believe. I have to look at the instructions. Wheels, these are your uh, struts for the horizontal stab, control stick, your upper uh, cowling seat, some more radiator bits, the lower cowling, and then your uh, cockpit tub and the uh, forward bulkhead, and it includes your pilot. Again, if you've seen me review the Tamiya kits, I do not like Tamiya pilots. They are squashed and flat and very undetailed, and very out of scale, but you know, if you're gonna build it in a, in a wheels up, stand or format that would uh, definitely fit the bill in a pinch um, so again quality very good for what you uh, what you pay um, moving on to the clear spot uh, clear parts again crisply molded uh, you get your forward part your main canopy your rear part including your uh, armor plate and your gun sight um, and it gives you the option to build it with the cockpit open or closed depending on how you modify the parts. So the bit, I mean, that's it. That's all you get. So it's a very basic kit, but it have everything you need to make a really good looking ME 109. So taking a look at the instructions, typical to me, a format, one big, long kind of sheet that gets all folded up into little sheets. Um, it does come with three, um, marking schemes. We'll see those at the end. You can also see there's quite a bit of paint needed. Uh, it's also because uh, at this point in the late 90s when this kit came out, Tamiya didn't have a lot of these colors as actual colors and they only reference their own brand of paint. So there's a lot of mixing required to get the colors you need, which makes actually building these quite difficult today because it's not labeled as, you know, um, 
a, a German color. It's not saying like RLM 87 or 75 or 82 or any of those kind of numbers. Uh, you just gives you a paint mix and you kind of have to decipher what scheme you're building, what colors they would be, and then use that to find, for example, I use Vallejo paints or Model Master. I need to go through and find what RLM color they're trying to approximate with these mixes and get the proper one uh, to do what I need to do. So starting here at step number one, uh, you're building up the cockpit, the forward bulkhead with the instrument panel. Uh, there is a decal that can go on the instrument panel if you choose. Um, and then you move on through to the uh, seat, the control yoke, the um, rudder pedals. It also gives you a decal for the uh, seat belts if you choose to do that. Uh, moving on to step two, you start assembling the fuselage. There's some bits and pieces that get glued into the inside of the cockpit. And then uh, the uh, nose gets assembled. And again, it's interesting that they ask you to paint the engine block, even though you really don't see that uh, once it's assembled, it's still something that they uh, uh, you know, ask you to do. Moving on to step three, you assemble the wings and include painting of the wheel wells. You can always do that after the fact. Um, but make sure you check your references for what colors you need to build for this age of aircraft. Uh, moving on to the uh, step four, you've got your flaps, including the uh, little area here that live behind the radiators, and then the uh, believe that's the lower cowling and all of the associated oil coolers and everything that go inside the lower cowling. On to step five, you're now installing the wings. That upper cowling gets put in place with the machine guns and uh, your um, elevators, horizontal stabs, rudder, and all of that stuff gets installed. Uh, there's also a little placard here which doesn't really make sense to install right now because you haven't painted anything yet. Um, that would be something you would probably put on later as you're building. Uh, step six uh, is where you get to choose whether you want the flaps up or down. Uh, if you put them down, you see here it tells you how to remove the tabs and glue them in. If you want them down, you can just use the tabs. Same with the uh, leading edge slats. It tells you how to modify them to put them in or out. And then you also put that lower cowling that you built over here in step four. That gets glued on all in step six. Moving on to step seven, you've got your main landing gear and your drop tank that gets assembled. Um, step eight, quite a bit going on in here. You start installing the underwing radiator housings, all of your pitot tube mass balances, tail wheel, and then down in here you also have your drop tank, the mount for the drop tank, and the uh, main landing gear gets installed. There's also some notices for some decals here, but again, most of this wouldn't get painted till later on, so you have to kind of play that game of putting these decals in the right place. You'll also notice here, they're asking you to paint the trip tabs red, even before you've painted the main airframe. So it's just a little bit of an odd build sequence that they give you, so it's just something to keep your eye out on. Step nine, uh, you've got your prop going together, including the colors in there, and then there's the three different uh, spinners, and it shows you what version gets each spinner. So again, make sure you correlate to which one you want to build. Step 10, you're assembling the canopy. Again, you choose whether you want to build it up, open or closed, and you remove as needed your uh, um, Armor plate gets put in place and then it gets glued into the canopy and then step 11 here you're doing the final assembly the canopy gets glued on your filter depending on which model you build your wing guns uh, your prop and then again down here it shows you the difference between the open or closed canopy and also there's an extra layer of bulletproof glass that you can apply um, if you choose to go down that route over here you get all of your um, stencils, uh, which also include some of the stencils over here in the main uh, instructions that you kind of have to go back and reference uh, depending on you know how you what order you build them on. But a lot of the, the the decals are back here, and not all of them are labeled here. And then um, step, uh, sorry, painting A aircraft A is from uh, the JG twenty six, and if you look on the box top, it basically includes all the different variants. So you can see that the variant here, white 12, that if, is, is section, uh, option A, is the box top itself. So you can see how it's got this, uh, the two-tone green over the, the, uh, the gray, yellow rudder, yellow cowling, black and white spinner, and then a white fuselage band with the kill markings on the tail. Uh, this is probably one of the easier of the two um, schemes to paint. Sorry, of the three. Um, the mottling isn't too um, convoluted. It'd be very easy to scale these up and make a template of the mottling, or you can just go and paint a freehand mottling uh, for this scheme, depending on what your skill level is. 
and you'll see for the top, it's just a standard, uh, it's just your standard splinter scheme on the top with the bottom underneath. So that's a relatively easy one to do. You could always even do it without any of the mottling or just paint them hard edges if you, if you don't have the skill to do a nice soft edged mottling. Um, B, uh, again, is probably um, one, again, of the easier ones you can do. Um, it is a two-tone desert scheme, uh, three-tone desert scheme, I guess. Um, it's got a, a I wish they would be better with their color callouts because I can't reference, as I mentioned earlier, to the actual German color schemes. But the bottom is AS5, which is a standard light blue that the, the Germans used on the lower fuselage. The upper fuselage, as far as I can tell, is like the uh, the, the German desert uh, camo color. And then there's the callout here for your dark green mottling that goes over top of that. And again, you see an example of that on the box art, uh, the light bottom, the, the brown tanny sort of desert color on top, and then the dark green mottling that goes over top of that. Again, this one wouldn't be too, too hard. They do include the full size 148 scale instruction. So again, you can photocopy these and cut out the mottling and use this as a painting template on your wing uh, to get that exactly where you want it and a nice feathered edge and all that other stuff. So it's, it's, it's very possible to do it up um, this scheme would be an easy one to do as well. Probably maybe even the easiest because it does give you um, a full size instructions already that's very easy to cut out and use as a template. Uh, the spinner is also half, I believe it's half red, half white, except seven, yeah. Half red, half white with a bit of a, like a, a swirly edge. So a bit of masking is needed to get that done. And that's from a JG27. And then the final version down here is a version flown by Helmut Wick in JG2. And it's the hardest of them all. It's got this tiny, tiny little feathering on it. I don't have any idea how you would pull that off in a scale color that would look anything close to realistic. That's completely beyond my building ability. And I wouldn't even stab to take a stab. If anybody out there knows how you could pull this off easily, let me know. It's got the same, um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? hard edged um, sort of splinter camo on the top and uh, it's the same two-tone green over the light gray. This one also has a, I think it's the same yellow, ten, two, two, two. yeah, it's the same yellow cowling and yellow rudder with a lot of kill markings on the tail. But just to show you, they have a picture of it on the side of the box, a painting, like a drawing of it. And this is what they expect you to do. And I have no idea how you would pull that off scale level without completely ruining it other than trying purposely to splatter your paint maybe but I don't know how you would make that look good uh, maybe like a screen using some sort of a screen material and just keep overlapping in different ways to make it all overlap but uh, I don't know it's, it's it's beyond my level of, of, of skill I wouldn't even know how to start make it look decent again if you guys out there have any idea how to pull that off please please leave a comment down below um, and let me know what you think uh, but that's uh, that's the three schemes, and as I already pointed out, it does include this full-size uh, painting template for the desert version. I think this is the version I'm going to go with. It's one of the easier of the schemes to do, and as I already have it at full scale, it's just a matter of a quick uh, printout to scan, and I can pull it off. Um, so it will probably be relatively easy to do. So that's that. Give me two secs. I'm going to get the decals out. So here the decals that come in the kit and uh, they are very nice, typical Tamiya quality. Surprisingly, um, they include the swastikas as single pieces. A, a lot of times they split the swastika uh, down the middle to, to uh, um, fit with laws that say you can't have swastikas. So they cut them in half and you have to put them together to make the swastika and then they're not printing swastikas. Um, a lot of the European kits go that route or a lot of them don't even include them anymore. 
Um, but you can see, like as I said earlier, you've got the white kill markings here uh, that go in that um, the third option on the tail. Uh, and these are the earlier kill markings for the first option. The uh, pendants and whatnot, and the unit markings, beautifully registered. Um, the instrument panel is nicely done. You've got all your stencils over here that fill in everything. It's got a nice sort of flat-ish finish to it, uh, so it goes together quite nicely. It looks like it's going to be a very easy set of decals to put together. Uh, very happy with... Uh, I've never had an issue with Tamiya decals in the past, so I'm hoping these go together quite nicely. I do like this, uh, the red and black 8. Um, so I mean, just to show you kind of the scheme I want to do, that desert scheme with the mottling on it, um, you're going to have that black with red outline 8, the white band on the fuselage, a couple kill markings on the tail, and you're going to have these uh, pendants here on the nose, which I think all that combined together on that desert scheme is going to make for a really interesting uh, marking, especially with the red and white spinner. So pretty happy with that. Uh, I can't complain. I'm uh, looking forward to getting these built, um, but uh, we'll leave that there. And that is your... Um, Tamiya 148 scale ME109 E4 slash E7 tropical and stay tuned I have two more ME109 and or ME109 variant kits uh, to show you so thanks for watching we'll see you next time thank you for watching guys and as always if you are interested in any of the content you see you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site. And if you're interested in any of this content, uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, YouTube to follow more. Thank you very much and see you guys next time.